How does a new heavy duty pickup survive after heavy abuse? We're going to find this out in this video because I have a three year old Ford F350 Power Stroke diesel right here. It's a dually and it has almost 300,000 miles on the clock. I know it's a little bit difficult to believe, but this was a hard working truck. So from a first glance, it looks pretty nice. Not a lot of damage. Let's take a closer look and let's take it for a spin and see what it's really like. So let's get up close. So first of all, let's look at the front. I would have expected a lot of damage here from road debris, rocks, and what's surprising also that I'll show you a Carfax on this truck. This truck spent almost all of its life in Canada. Started in Alberta and kind of went maybe even all the way across Canada, maybe, maybe multiple, multiple times. It looks like it had maybe a bra or some sort of protection on the front and its fog lamps have been either hit by road debris or rocks and they're damaged. But other than that, take a look at the headlamps. I don't think they've been replaced. There is a little bit of chipping. There's a little bit of a crack right there, but it looks in super great shape. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a couple of loose plastic pieces and the front chin's been hit a couple of times, but it, this truck is amazing. It looks basically stock, stock, stock. All right, let's look at the uh, suspension. Let me grab the camera really quick and take a look underneath because if this was in Canada, it probably will have some rust because of the road salt, hard winter conditions. The front steering has some a little bit of surface rust. The shock looks in decent shape. Maybe it was replaced. The front spring looks okay. And let me see. The caliper looks new. So maybe did, somebody did a brake job on this and somebody put brand new tires. Uh, so this truck I have access to thanks to our friends at Booth Motors. They're in Longmont, Colorado, and it's on sale well, as of this recording, I don't know if it's going to be sold soon or not, um, but overall condition seems to be pretty, pretty surprising. You're probably asking right now, Andre, you're probably lying. It doesn't have 300,000 miles. It's only three years old. By the way, this is a 2020 model with the redesign. The way you know this is because there's a little slant in this grill. So this light is not fully square. So that's kind of one, one way you know that this is an updated uh, truck. The other way you know is, well, you know that's what's underneath the hood because it's a power stroke. But let me pop the hood and let's look at this engine because they updated it in 2020. And I'll show you the miles, everything, the odometer, the Carfax, I'll show you everything. Everything I have, I don't know the owner, I don't know who owned it or which company owned it. But uh, this engine bay looks, I mean, relatively nice for, I mean, it's three years old, dual batteries. The battery was replaced recently. I can see the date, March, 2022. There's, I don't see a date on this one, but it's probably not too old. It's only about been three years. It's got kind of an aftermarket filter, maybe AFE power. Or maybe it's just a sticker, who knows at this point. Uh, but visually looking, this is, looks stock to me. It doesn't look modified or anything like that. All right, let's keep moving. Let me grab the camera again because I want to show you sort of the underneath. Because maybe it's all rusted out. Maybe, maybe it's been deleted, who knows? Okay. Let's take a look. All right, so the emission system looks intact. Let me get a slightly wider view. So the particulate filter and some of the other systems look intact. It does have a bit of rust on it, as you would expect from a lot of miles. This truck averaged nearly 100,000 miles a year. There's some surface rust. Right there you see on the frame, rear suspension components, rear axle also have a bit of rust. 
the rear shock is leaking. So the rear shock might be being close to being done. But I, you know, I mean, Canada has a lot of dirt roads as well. So it's not, sorry, this surface is really hot. So one way you can find out if this was on dirt roads a lot, um, often you would see some rock chips on secondary fenders, you know, from rocks flying against the body. I don't see a lot here, although there are a few markings, few small markings here. You can also sometimes find dirt like between the mud flaps or between the wheel liners. And sometimes even right here in the bumper, like inside the rear bumper, you can find some dirt, but I don't see, I don't see a lot of evidence of that. So maybe it's spent a lot of its life on paved roads. Um, it has a BMW fifth wheel gooseneck hitch. You can see the gooseneck ball right there. So it seems like it's towed a gooseneck trailer and there's even the wiring right there, seven pin connector for a gooseneck. It has this tank in the bed, which was quite odd as well. Now let me open the tailgate. Let's see, let's see how this works. Um, it's not opening and I know it's not locked. Let me get the key. Okay, there's... Okay, so the tailgate is jammed. Let me jump inside. Let's see. So it could be that the latch mechanism is broken. So this is not bedlined. Let me grab the camera really quick. So you can see the bed is in decent shape. So this is all aluminum truck. Uh, the bed is aluminum, the cab is aluminum, and that's why I think you don't see a lot of rust as far as underneath the cab and in the bed. It's been scratched, but, you know, aluminum can oxidize and other things can happen to it, but it won't rust like this tank. So this tank, I don't know what it was used for, has open, two open ports and it's drilled and mounted to the bed. So they're carrying either fuel or some other liquids in here. I have no idea what this truck was doing. Um, it doesn't look like it's connected to the fuel system, um, the tank, that the fill up that's in here. All right, so let me jump back out. So I don't think we'll solve the tailgate problem right now. Sometimes what happens if some cargo moves and hits the tailgate, and then bend some of the latching mechanisms that can um, kind of cause this problem or if the latch itself breaks. I think in this case, it may be the latch that's broken. But look, this is an XLT, it's in decent shape. The hitch is a little rusty. And by the way, this looks like a big boy. This looks like a three inch hitch. So what Ford started doing is they have a obviously two inch receiver on their light duty trucks. They have a two and a half on their heavy duty, super duty trucks. And then they also have a three inch receiver. So large hitches for really high capacity. Let's look inside. Oh, there's somebody doing donuts over there. Do you see that? It's Friday night. Okay, you guys didn't see that. Let me grab this really quick. So, of course, 14,000 pound gross vehicle weight. So it's a dually. It was built in January, 2020. Has a payload of 5,600 pounds, which means it weighs about 8,400 pounds. And now you start wondering, okay, Andre, how many miles? Well, actual miles is 275,000. I'll show you in a second. We have a sticker. This truck original, and I believe this is in dollars US. Actually, I don't know, because it says Alberta right here. 78,774. If this was this year, this would be a steal because a lot of these trucks are now selling for way more than this. This may have been even Canadian dollars. But look, it was 
manufactured in January. It was sold in June. This is July 2023, so basically three years. Lots of records. Lots of records in Alberta, British Columbia, and then Montana. So then it finally entered the US and it was originally exported to Canada. So this is all information available, pretty detailed, clean, clean title, 21 service records, one recall done. I don't see any major services here. So of course you can pause this video and take a closer look, but I don't see like major repairs. There was one recall performed right there. All right, so that's all good. All right, let's jump in and start this up. Okie dokie. Let's start this up. So once again, let's kind of zoom in on the mile, miles, 275,351. So not quite 300,000, but it's soon approaching. Okay, hold on. Oh, a couple of our tires may be low on pressure. All right, we're not going very far, that's okay. Now, let me get this while we were putting on seat belts. We can take a look at some other items here. So this, this is an XLT, so this is pretty basic. Air conditioning is blowing cold. Let's see, engine brake on. Traction control disable. So all that stuff seems to be normal. It has four wheel drive. Let me check four wheel drive. Here we go. Let me put my seat belt on. By the way, let me quiet down this. It idles very nice. Really great. And I was skeptical about that. I thought it was in kilometers at first, but no, it's miles. That's for sure. Let me put it in four high. Gosh, it's now getting hot in here. Has heated seats. Oh, there, it's crabbing a little. You feel that? You can kind of tell that. All right, let me put it in low. So, neutral, low, there's a click, advanced track disabled, traction control disabled, starts in second gear. Oh yeah, it's definitely crabbing and it's definitely crawling. So yeah, so that's nice. So the transfer case appearing to be working trying to go back to too high I'm gonna back up oh the camera doesn't work so whatever happened to the tailgate also killed the camera so maybe the wiring is out maybe somebody tried to replace the tailgate and couldn't do it or something else happened now we're back in two-wheel drive and I want to see how it shifts uh, a lot of you guys have been asking us for that you know or telling us that four transmissions the new 10 speeds that this has and you can verify that because it says up to 10 right there in line um, that the transmissions either fail or they become rough um, after some age well this is age all right let me accelerate Ooh, it left a little bit of rubber i'm not gonna do what that other fella did because he was doing donuts not that i don't want to do donuts but I want to be respectful, you know, to this area and this truck as well. I'm going to do a little impromptu acceleration, zero to 60 for you. So you can kind of get a real world perspective of what it's like to be in an older truck. I'm going to try to merge on this highway and there's an entire merge lane here. Plus I have a light, 
advantage. So let me pause here for a sec. That's zero. Third gear, fourth, fifth. It seems really healthy. 60. That was with traction control enabled. I can also disable and try another one. But the transmission was quick to shift. This engine makes or was rated at, this is a new generation of the Power Stroke, it was rated at 475 horsepower and 1,050 pound-feet of torque. This is, this was kind of forthcoming um, and responding to what Ram was doing back then, which, which was 1,000 pound-feet of torque. Ram was first to that, and then Ford responded in a big way with lots of horsepower, 475 horsepower in this engine. So I'm going to turn around and do another acceleration. I have another merge lane this way. This time I have disabled my traction control. It left a little bit of rubber and 60. This is a mile above sea level as always, Colorado. So I would say this truck is fairly healthy. Uh, maybe a few horsepower left the building it's hard to know, you know, if this is brand new oil, engine oil or not, when it was changed. Maybe it was changed recently. Yeah, there's an oil change sticker actually. Huh. I'm impressed. So, I'll close with this um, after we um, start driving again a little bit. Uh, I can close this video and that, I just want to say that when you buy you You guys often ask us questions. Which truck should I buy? Should I buy a light-duty half-ton truck? Should I buy a heavy-duty truck? Should I buy gas or diesel? Um, here's the, my answer for this truck um, If you're driving lots of miles and if you're towing you got to do heavy-duty diesel. Why? well for the same money, you could buy an F-150 in this case. But if you buy a diesel, you get longevity and power and efficiency uh, with heavy trailers. And you get a heavier frame than a light duty truck. You got heavier axles, heavier springs, heavier everything, brakes. Transmission is more heavy duty. So you're getting all those benefits. And if you don't use those benefits, let's say you bought a heavy duty truck like this and you used it to commute to work, five miles here and there and you know just because you want a big truck like this that's not the proper use of that vehicle that vehicle was used to go lots of miles like this one towing trailers doing heavy work and still it lasts so even after this much mileage let me go back to the dealer it's still okay it drives okay it stops okay it accelerates okay um and well, you saw it right there. It's fairly impressive. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you on the next video. Here you go, a high mileage truck review. Thanks for joining me.